Hello. Hi. Welcome to the first quick tip Photoshop edition. Why is it Photoshop edition? I don't know because I want to do quick tips on things. On things that are either editing, um, graphic work, um, just anything. Just quick tips on how to create content, how to be uh, more proficient in Photoshop more proficient in Sony Vegas but this is going to be the first quick tip and it is gonna come from Photoshop which most of these quick tips will I just don't want to pigeonhole the series in calling it Photoshop quick tips because it's just quick tips um, like I said this one is gonna be Photoshop and this was one of my most requested series and I'm gonna try to do as many of these as I can obviously I don't have like a thousand quick tips or even just tips, not even quick, <laughs> just tips in general. There's so many ways to go about uh, using Photoshop and these are my ways that I've came upon just by using it for 10 years. I guess about 10 years, yeah. Um, but I, just so, just a little preface, just in case anybody doesn't know what where my education background is or what I'm all about or why I am showing Photoshop quick tips. Um, like I said before, it's my most requested series. I do a lot of uh, branding on YouTube and Twitch and I do my own branding. And a lot of people have questions about my graphics and about graphics that I've done for other people. And these quick tips are kind of things that can help you build onto those ideas that I've like constructed throughout the brandings and stuff. So. These, these are very helpful, I think, in my opinion. I have a couple in my head that I really want to show you. This first one might be the most helpful. Um, and a lot of these are going to seem simple. But if you get creative, they will not be simple. Okay? All right. So the first quick tip. I, here's the thing. Go back to what I was saying before about uh, schooling and education. I only went to community college for one semester. I did take a Photoshop class. I didn't learn that much. I did, however, drop out of college, create my portfolio, and then I actually landed a, a graphic design career in um, book publishing at Penguin Random House. So uh, it all worked out. I don't suggest that. That's just my story, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background on me. But here's the first quick tip. I'm going to call it constraint. I don't think that's the name of it, but like I said, I, I don't know the, the terms and I, I'm not going to know the terms throughout and I'm okay with that. The only thing is you guys aren't going to know the terms. Um, but here, let's get started with some text. Uh, basically what I want to show you is this constraint feature, which is such an important feature. I'm going to be using my own name here and I'm sorry if that sound, that seems um, ambiguous or something. I don't know. It's just so simple and you guys can relate to it if you are on my channel. Um, I don't have many fonts on this, uh, computer, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to work with what we have. I'm just going to create something super simple so you guys can see what constraint is all about and, um, why I think it's so important. And, uh, you can, after I show you this, you can see how much I use it in my own designs. So, <clears throat> you have basic text here, right? So, in my logo, half of my text is white and half of it is orange. And I know you're like, if it, here's the thing. If you're an advanced Photoshop user, I, I don't know if I'm going to show you anything new. But if this interests you, maybe stick around and you might learn little tricks. I, I'm not sure. Uh, this is kind of for beginners, but it's also just tips that I've learned that aren't so apparent in Photoshop. So... Half the text is one color, half the text is another color. So what some people may be doing is rasterizing the text, right? Rasterize the text and then you can go like this and then you can either do edit, actually you can't even do that. I'm so used to my way that I don't even know how you would go about doing this the weird way. But first of all, your first, your first thing here is wrong. I would never rasterize the text and th this process will show you how to do it without doing that. But just say somebody is new to Photoshop and this is what they're doing. They're rasterizing the text because they don't, they can't figure out 
how to change the text from one color to another. See, say if you go like this, right? Go back to the text file. You want to get in between this O because as you guys know in my logo, it cuts right in between the O. Uh, and you're like, I don't know how to do that. I don't get how he did that. If I can only make this side white and I can only make this side um, red or whatever. I don't know how he got in between the O. So you might be like, all right, let's rasterize this type like this. Rasterize. Rasterize basically takes out the shape and the uh, resizability and basically just smashes it into pixels, which isn't great. So you would copy this and then you would edit, paste in place or something. I'm not, like I said, I'm not even sure how people would do this, but I know that people do this. Um, and then you would have this uh, WO, right? Great. Uh, what are we going to do? Col color overlay? That's fine, I guess. You could either do that or you could select it and then fill it. Um, as you can see, look at the pixelation already. And we're, we're like not even all the way zoomed in. This is 100%. See all that pixelation? That's because of the rasterizing. That's because of the color overlay. Um, it's just a bad practice. And bad practice in Photoshop leads to uh, bad outcomes because your files, if you ever want to go back and change something, take it from me. It's the worst if you don't, if you don't have good practice. Um, so here's the tip, okay? To the tip. Quick tip. Be quick, Jay. I'm sorry. I've never done this before. Um, so you have your text. You could resize it. Doesn't matter. Let's actually make this white, all white, and then we are going to make this background. I never make true black. Uh, that's just my thing. I don't know. I really don't care for true black. So what? here's, here's what you do. You take a shape, right? A square, because we want a straight line. So let's hit that right down the middle of the O, okay? We have this box. We want the W and the half beginning of the O to be orange. So let's make it orange. Great, perfect, it's orange. And now you're like, all right, now what? I don't understand. So here's what you do. You hold Alt. You hold Alt on the keyboard. I think it's, I think it's Alt as well on um, Mac, but here, here's what you gotta do. When you're holding alt over the wolves thing, nothing happens. It's just a, a pointer finger. Same with rectangle. When you hold it in between on this line right here, you can see it changes into a box with an arrow on the left of it. Okay? This is how you constrain objects into other objects. Okay? So it's you holding alt and moving your mouse around. You'll see that box. You click that, bo that, that line. I'm sorry, not the box. You click the line. And then it's like magic, dude. It's like freaking magic, bro. And then it's in there, okay? You can see no pixelation. We're completely fine. And here's the best part about it. So say you want to do um, the rest of the text in white, right? Uh, just do that. Oh, here's another good tip about it, right? So it's going to be annoying if you do this. Sorry. If you do this, like a, a new layer or something, or you create a, a square on top of that and have to hit alt over it and do it every time. If you just create a new layer under, if you hit wolves and create a new layer, you'll see all of these are constraint into wolves, the text wolves. So like, here's what you can, here's another uh, method of what you can do. Um, so if you want to just get like, I don't know, just get fancy with it and do like a gradient or something, you can do that, and it's not its not outside your text. It's completely in... Let's make it a different color so you guys can tell because that's the same color as the background. But yeah, you can tell it's completely inside your text, and you can you could do this with a brush. And another good thing is you can do this with like a texture. So uh, l let, me, let me pause for a second and grab a texture. Okay, I'm back. I have a texture. So I literally just... I searched uh, paint wall texture. I don't know. I have no idea what I searched. I, I searched so many textures <laughs> that I have the weirdest search, uh, Google search results. But yeah, so as you could see, I, I literally just dragged it over and it was already on here because I had this layer selected. So it still is like, oh, you still want to constraint these new layers. Um, but yeah, usually if you would pull it over, it would uh, just pop right on top of it. But like I said, hold Alt and click the line. Make sure that square is there and it's going to constraint right into it. You're going to want to drag it below the orange because you know that orange line is completely down the middle. 
So we have this. We have a texture in it now. And um, no pixelation, completely clean. And if you ever mess up or need to go back or like say, oh, that, that gets too dark towards the S, it doesn't pop enough, you can just go back into your PSD, take this, and move it over. Well, obviously, it's too small, but you can move it over, make it bigger, and then that gradient's gone. And you, there's nothing. There's no loss. There's no loss of letters. There's no loss of um, quality. Nothing. It's perfect. Constraint might be, and I know this is bold, might be my favorite Photoshop technique. There are so many things you can do with it. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's the reason why I think a lot of my designs come out looking the way I want them to look. Um, but then, yeah, like, th that's another thing. Like, I did the drop shadow, so you could do this, right? You can add effects onto the layers that are into the constraint. So you can add, like, a inner shadow. This is what I did for my logo. That's why on the inside of the O, it looks like it's, like, um, indented a little bit because I did this. Um, if you do that, do a little bit of distance and a little bit of choke as you can see the shadow starts to come in and make it a little bit bigger and then opacity like way down something like that you know um but that's like it's an insane feature that you could like add effects onto the layers that are constrained inside your text file now if you move your text file around it's gonna it's gonna look ridiculous so you always when you when you um want to move these like across the document you always want to select all the constraint uh layers okay um all right i don't want to ramble too much just please leave me some constructive criticism in the comments i know i ramble um i just get like super passionate and excited about this stuff because i'm a loser no i'm i'm kidding we're all we're all good we're all good here but um honestly if you have any constructive criticism let me know if this helped you in any way let me know if you have a question of what you want to see, like in the next quick tip, like if you are struggling with something, tweet it at me at Chase and the nicest or post it in the comments. I will do another quick tip. Um, hopefully soon. I, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear back and hear if you enjoyed this or if you're confused or what, just give me your feedback. All right, guys. Um, until next time, stay safe, stay up and peace out. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Peace.